Okay, dads, let's go ahead and get started, guys. Now, some of you've already let me know how uncomfortable you were in last week's meeting. So tonight, we're gonna try to respect each other's boundaries. What? Tonight, we've also got a guest with us, David. And would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, hey, guys. I'm David. David. Hey. Up, David. How many kids do you have, David? None. At least not at the moment. Uh, my wife is pregnant, and uh, she should be delivering any day now. Mm, that's great. So Super. Oh, great. Awesome. Who would like to go first? Anyone. Anyone. I'll go. Perfect. Todd? Yes. My daughter and I went to the mall, and she said she wanted to take the stairs to the second level. And I said, I don't trust stairs because they're always up to something. <laughs> Todd, I'm sorry that happened. Okay. Yeah. I encourage you to try to resist the urge to make jokes like that. Yeah. My turn? Okay. Can I go? Okay. Yesterday, actually, my daughter got home and she asked me how my day was. And I said, well, a guy tried to sell me a coffin, but that's the last thing I need. Oh, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. that joke is dead on arrival. Because it's the last thing I need. David, <laughs> how about you? Oh, I, I didn't, I didn't say This is a safe zone. Just jump on in. Yeah, I, I'm, I guess I'm just scared of being a dad. I'm afraid I'm gonna start telling bad jokes just like my dad. Well, it might be in our nature. We can fight against it. Hey, speaking of nature, I tried to catch some fog yesterday. I missed. <laughs> M-I-S-T. Oh, You're a monster. I, this is where the boundary is. I'm done. This is where you are. Hello? Really? Okay, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I'll be right there. That was Julie. Her water just broke. I guess the baby finally ran out of womb. <laughs> I'm gonna be a dad. Don't you think it should be going? Oh, yeah. So I told my wife she drew her eyebrows too high. She seemed surprised.
Good morning, Vine Church. I'm glad that you are joining uh, with us this morning. I hope that you've been having a great week, and I hope that um, you would let us know through the website, thevinerc.com, or an email, info at thevinerc.com, how we can pray for you, um, how we can encourage you, maybe even help you with some counseling. Um, there's a lot of anxiety and depression um, and just uh, this uh, social distancing and not being able to be together is difficult. And uh, we want to be able to help you. I want to let you know that um, small groups are, uh, some of them are up and running. Some are meeting in person. So please uh, go to the website and find out um, which one works for you. Some are still doing Zoom and we want to be uh, sensitive to those that um, have um, some medical issues and don't want that to be um, increased with uh, being around others. We want to be patient. We want to be sensitive to you. But those that are meeting together, we're excited about that. The men's groups meeting on Tuesday nights. Uh, some of the ladies' smaller groups are meeting. And the youth group's going to be looking to meeting in some of the parks. And um, so anyway, I just want to encourage you that... Um, Get involved in these small groups, even if they're just Zoom. It's encouraging to see these loving faces each week. And so let's open up our time together with prayer. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness to us. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to us through your word. Help us, Father, to be who you want us to be. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to Psalms. And uh, if you were with us last week, uh, we started Psalm 23. So let's turn to Psalm 23. And this is, a, again, a psalm of David, who was a shepherd. And we find that he talks about uh, his Lord and our Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, being um, his shepherd and our shepherd. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Last week we looked at how the Lord is David's shepherd, the Lord is our shepherd, and that Jesus is my shepherd, I have all that I need. We looked at how in verse 2, the Lord gives us rest. The Lord leads us uh, beside peaceful streams. Well, this morning, I want us to look at verse 3. It says that the Lord renews my strength. The Lord renews my strength. There are times when we go through life and things are just crazy and we feel as if we're being burdened and attacked in every area, financially, um, relationships, health, um, and it just seems like it's just one problem after another and that nothing seems to be going right. And we get to get just zapped of our strength. Um, I struggle with sleep apnea like many of you do. And I wear a, you know, a CPAP machine, which basically CPAP, it stands for a really cruddy time of trying to sleep where you wake up a hundred different times with a vacuum hose wrapped around your neck. That's what the acronym CPAP stands for. Um, I, many times I will wake up and I, I swear I feel more exhausted when I wake up than I did when, before I went to bed. And I know many of you know exactly what that's like. We need to have our strength renewed. There's nothing in this world that will renew our strength. Nothing. There's only one thing that will renew our strength. And I'm not talking about physical strength. And I'm not talking about even mental strength. And I'm not even talking about the, the strength that we receive after a good night's sleep. Jesus is the only one that can fulfill everything in our life. And what's most important in our life is our spiritual strength. 
Scripture says that when we come to know Christ, all that sin and shame of ours has been put on the cross, and it is God's wrath has been poured out on Jesus, and all that sin and shame is gone, and it is taken care of with the blood of Jesus. And then we know Scripture tells us that now that we are believers in Jesus, that we are a new creation. And so David said that the Lord renews my strength. Jesus renews our strength. And he also renews us. We don't have a life that we add a little bit of Jesus to. We kill this life and we live the Jesus life. If Jesus says, I don't want you to do that, you're not supposed to go and do that. We don't add Jesus. We don't pepper a little Jesus onto our life. We don't read scripture according to how it fits into our lifestyle. We accept Christ and allow him to make us into a new life, into having a new lifestyle. When we do that, it, it, it brings peace. The Lord said, if you are weary and heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest. And he said that in some of the most dire political situations. And so what was he saying? Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden with all the political garbage that's going on with the Roman Empire. And what did he say? I'll get rid of it and I'll create a new political system that'll be better. Is that what he said? No. He basically was saying that there is no, there is no reason to worry and focus on this political se this season with the Romans here. But come to me, those of you who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest, rest inside. I wonder how many of us are experiencing God's rest right now. It seems as if if the world is a mess, then we become a mess. If the world doesn't like our political party, Democrat, Republican, then we're unhappy. If the world doesn't like what we stand for, then we become upset. That's not what we see with Jesus. He didn't change one thing about the Romans. In fact, he actually had some really good meetings with some Roman soldiers. In fact, when he was crucified and couldn't move on the cross, he forgave those who crucified him. Jesus renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Guides me along right paths. Stop going everywhere for where you're supposed to go in your life. Except going to Jesus. Jesus will open the doors that Jesus wants opened. Jesus has the answer for the problems that you're having. Jesus guides you along the right paths. We don't add Jesus to our life. Jesus comes in and guides us to the right paths. We don't conquer on our own and say, Lord, would you please come and agree with how I'm walking on this path? Or Jesus, I don't really want to know what you think about the path I'm on, but I want you just to join with me and make this path that I've chosen blessed. No, it's I am dead, it is Christ who lives within me, and he guides me on the right paths. I think too much of us, too many of us, we're, we spend too much time asking Jesus to take care of the paths we've chosen, and the Lord's going, I didn't choose the path that you're on. You're on that path, and there's no peace, because you picked it. The Lord's saying, let me pick the paths, and inside you will have peace. Inside you will have joy and strength. He had these followers that followed him underneath the Roman Empire, under, still under Roman taxation, still under the oppression of the Romans. And he had hundreds and thousands of people that just followed him by foot everywhere. And many of them were getting saved and having their lives changed. And the Lord didn't change the political situation once. Wow. But they had peace. You see, we can have peace to allow the world be the hellhole it is because this is not our home. The Lord lives inside us. 
that leads us right into verse 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Why? For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. I think as believers, we're spending way too much time wanting God to change our surroundings. And in the meantime, we're not allowing opening it up and letting him change the inside. The Lord does his work from the inside out. Our goal is not to go ye therefore and make this world better through politics, education, strength, power, and through the, the uh, patriot, patriotism of the United States of America. Nope. I love July 4th. I love, you're going to hate this, I love the Patriot football team. Go ahead, judge me. I love apple pie. Ta-da. I love this country. It's the greatest country ever. But as believers in Jesus living in this country, we are not called to the things of this world. We are called to the things of a greater world and a greater life. Does God want to use our voice? Yes. Does God want us to use our wisdom and knowledge? Yes. Does God want us to be like him? Yes. The greatest thing is for us to lead others to Christ. The greatest thing is for us to help others and plant a seed of hope in them about Jesus. The greatest thing is for us to water that seed a little bit as we go through our life with the love and kindness and hope of Jesus. The greatest thing for us is not anything that's happening in our world. The greatest thing that's happening is helping people get rescued from this world and its sin and to know Jesus as Savior. Jesus is going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. I hope he'll say that. So what did he tell his servants to do? To make disciples. Lead others to Christ. Do the words that I say, are they helping people get saved? The way that I act, is it helping people get saved? The things that I post on social media, is it helping people get saved? Am I causing more disunity? Am I causing more frustration? Am I causing more hatred? I think for, for many of us, we just need to take a pause and do more listening and more caring. We might, you might have the right answer for this world, but that's not what the Lord told us to do. The Lord told us to lead others to Christ. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. It doesn't say, Lord, please take away all the darkest valleys. No. When I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Why will I not be afraid? Why will I not be afraid? Because the Lord is close beside me. He will bring us protection and comfort. Verse 5. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. That is an incredible picture. Get all your enemies together. The Lord puts a table together and a feast. I like feasts. I really do. I can't imagine having a feast prepared by the Lord. And then to do it in front of all my enemies. What does that mean? It's it's the idea of... of you have your God, you enemies, but this is my God. He is my shepherd. You have your shepherd, but I don't have to run away from you and be in hiding of you. I can be out in the open with you because the Lord is going to prepare a table and I'm going to have a feast. And I want you to see this, this relationship and fellowship that God has with me. And it's a way of even probably the enemies looking and going, I don't have that with my God. I don't have that. goes on and says you honor me by anointing my head with oil uh, this is amazing it's a it's a symbol of, of 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 the lord's presence and the holy spirit with us and then he says my cup overflows with blessings wow so blessed the last couple of weeks we've kind of we've opened up our monday night prayer meeting and instead of doing zoom we've had people come and this last time we just had a really great group and uh the praying was wonderful, of course, and the, and the Spirit of God being there was wonderful, but I'm just being reminded again, I'm just being reminded again of how beautiful it is for us to be together, 
The scripture says, do not forsake the gathering together of yourselves. I used to think it was, do not forsake the gathering yourselves together to have worship, to have church. It, it's, it's do not forsake being together because where two or three are gathered, I am there in the midst. And it, it was just wonderful to see each other's faces and to love on each other and care for each other. My cup overflows with blessings. And seeing these people on a prayer meeting, it just, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm just so blessed. I hope you're blessed. I hope you're living as a blessed person. Don't worry and fret about the darkest valleys. Don't even focus on them. But focus on that the Lord is close beside you. Focus in that the Lord will take care of your enemies. In fact, he is in such good charge of what's going on. He's going to prepare a feast for you in front of them. And remember, the Lord is going to honor you and, and anoint you with oil. and He'll be with you. And he, and, and he overflows our cup with incredible blessings. And then David ends with this, which echoes what Jesus told his disciples, that I'm going to go and prepare a place for you in heaven to be with me forever and ever. David says in verse 6, Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Does your life echo and let other people know that God wants to chase after them too with goodness and unfailing love? I hope so. I had the opportunity to pray with a young man who came to our house and he, he bought something that we had from on eBay and you know how that can be kind of a strange thing. You don't know who this is coming to your home. And he just kind of shared that he had just lost his mom and it was a tragic loss. It was fast. It was uh, cancer and he, he wasn't crying, but you know, just a man that was hurting and, uh, he had some good, colorful language in between while we were talking. And, uh, he was going to pick this item up. and just felt like the Lord was like, brought about a divine appointment. And so I, you know, I just, um, I just started with, you know, what, the, what, you know, what political party are you affiliated with? And uh, how, what's your stance on this issue and this issue? And, just felt like I really needed to go down this road of making sure that he was where I lined up before I gave him hope and strength with Jesus. I didn't do that. I don't care. Jesus ministered to people while the Romans were oppressing the nation. I was able to ask him, can I pray with you? And he was, you know, two guys standing in a driveway, going to be praying. I could tell he was just like, oh boy. But he said yes. And, and he could have said no, but he said yes. And so, you know, I made sure that the prayer just went on and on and on. No. It was short. It was sweet. It was kind. It was, Lord, help him in his grieving. Help his dad grieving over the loss of his wife. And help this family. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know what the Lord's going to do with that. Did I did I share the Roman road? Did I share the four spiritual laws? Did I walk them through John 3, 16? Did I tell them all the background of the Old Testament and all that? No. You know, it just felt like the Lord said, just be kind and be loving. And, and, and care. And act like you give a rip. Act like you, you're hurting that the guy lost his mom. You know, sharing Jesus isn't complicated. I think we just have to do what he said. And the first thing he said was be loving and be kind. I think we get too caught up in thinking about what I'm going to say when the Lord is probably just saying, hey, you have the Holy Spirit. You are complete in Christ. If you'll just be kind and loving, I'll give you the right words. And I'm sorry, but for some of you, you're not going to ever lead anyone to Jesus. You don't have any kindness. You haven't learned to love others. And I want you to lead others to Jesus. But you got to start off by just being kind. 
and loving and caring. You got to be walking with the Lord each day as he's at work inside you so that you can be prepared when he's ready to, to use you outside in the world. You have to be more concentrated on what's going on in the kingdom than what's happening in the world. And you have to remember this. When you love Jesus and Jesus loves you, he's going to chase you with goodness and unfailing love. Don't be robbed in this life of the Lord's pursuing you with goodness and unfailing love because your eyes and your heart and your, and your flesh are after everything else. Pause and wait and think. And remember that the Lord is good and that his goodness and unfailing love is pursuing you. And it's not pursuing you a little bit. It's pursuing you all the days of your life. And then you can finish out by understanding this. You have hope. And you have hope that the world needs. What is that hope? It is not more education, better politics, a better country. It is hope that one day I will live in the house of the Lord forever. That's the hope. That's the answer. Lord Jesus, help us to be listening to you. Help us, Father, to remove the blinders. Help us, Father, to remove how we see other people. Help us, Father, to be kind and loving. Father, when we don't want to be kind and we don't want to be loving, because, Lord, you know my heart, sometimes I don't want to be kind and I don't want to be loving. Lord, when I don't want to be kind and I don't want to be loving, Lord, remind me and help me to be kind and to be loving. Father, we can't do this in our own ability. We can't have less of our flesh and less of us and more of you unless, Lord, you are at work helping us and guiding us. And Father, you've promised the power of your Holy Spirit that you'll be with us, that you will lead us beside still waters, and that, Lord, you will guide us and give us peace. And that, Lord, even though we're going to go through dark valleys, that you're going to be with us, you're going to guide us. And that we don't have to worry about dark valleys. We don't have to worry about enemies. You're going to prepare a feast before our enemies. And maybe our enemies will come to know you as Savior and Lord. Father, thank you that you are our shepherd. Forgive us where we have been sheep and wandered away from what, you, where the direction you want us to go. Help us, Father, to follow you. Help us, Lord, to help others to know that there is hope and that they, they can live for the rest of their life an eternal life in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a great week. this road, swollen in the heat of my failings. My fingers bleed from shattered dreams, my throat falters. My stomach churns on endless regrets and words rehearse to beg my way back in. I try to grab for a sense of worth, but the air is thin. Up ahead a figure stands, and I know that I must face him. My shoulders drop, but his are lower, slumped in the weight of a child lost. His chest heaves in love's deep pain, his eyes reach to mine. Arms rise like dawn-lit wings, and now he's running, his face a song. He falls upon me, washing the squandered years in tears and kisses. He pulls me close, 
Those walls I built so sure, so certain within, collapse now like petals to the touch of his embrace. His words pour like summer rain, weeping those names I've so desperately sought. My child, my pleasure, my springtime bloom, my ever after returned. He holds the bruises like tender flames, holds the sorrow, holds my mistakes, takes the heartbreak, the burning shame, and draws me home.